Do you like city building games? Because I got a whole 24 games that are on the way. Now, us city building enthusiasts haven't been having the best of times as the genre kind of fell out of favor, but it might be time for a comeback. The twists bringing the genre back seem to be adding survival themes and a few RTS elements along with the simulations. I mentioned 24 upcoming city builders in this video and the first half are based on survival and many have strategy built into them. What's important though is that it seems that the city building genre is coming back back into style, and at least some of these games should end up being good. First we have Frostpunk by 11-Bit Studios, a city survival game where heat means life and every decision comes at a cost. From the creators of This War of Mine, you define laws from child labor to treatment of the sick, maintain people's hope, and explore the world. There's a big question of morality when it comes to the choices you have to make. The game looks harsh and if there's enough depth to it as to allow true consequences for your choices, I can see it being captivating for many hours. If those choices don't have the impact as promised, this could end up being a bit repetitive. Next we've got Surviving Mars by Hamamont Games. Colonize Mars and discover its secrets with minimal casualties. Harvest resources and build up your colony as you establish humanity's first base on the Red Planet. Seeming to be another step forward from Avon Colony, this could take the colony survival game further if it's done right. It's a fine line for a colony survival between intense, endless captivation or it being a repetitive, boring chore. Being from the creators of Tropical 5 and supported by Paradox, however, we can have good hopes for this one. Then we have The Colonists by Code by Fire, a planetary settlement game inspired by the Settlers and Anno. It's an adorable looking game that some will love the look of while others will hate. What's most interesting is that it'll actually progress through the ages, from the Stone Age to the Space Age, but that alone won't provide the depth required for captivating gameplay. That's where the competitive edge of interacting with other settlements should help. A single player campaign along with competitive and co-op multiplayer provides a variety of experiences. It could be great, but it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Next up we've got Ymir by Ronchi Pork. A multiplayer city building game with strategy, diplomacy and management with pigs. Made by a single person, Emir promises a grand idea of semi-persistent multiplayer servers with up to 100 players each simultaneously building their own cities, exploring the world map, colonizing new lands and conquering their neighbors. It looks heavily inspired by the old impressions classics, but it's important to note that it doesn't use the walker system. It's charming with some interesting combination of mechanics, but might be a little rough around the edges as it gets developed. But if you like more chill and slower paced city building survival, you should like this one. And then we have Neolithic by Alex T. Harvey. A historical strategy game inspired by Age of Empires, Civilization and Caesar III, set in the Neolithic to Late Bronze Age. Another game made by a single person, this one leans a bit more towards the RTS side, but the survival, colony, city building stuff is still prominent. Characters have needs, strategic positional combat, detailed city planning, and lots of customization. The painted aesthetic is a nice touch too, but again, as with any solo dev, it most likely will be a little rough around the edges as it gets developed. It raised 13,000 Aussie dollars on Kickstarter, meaning it's a smaller development, but generally not too much has been shown off at the time of making this video, but it should be one worth keeping an eye on. Next we have Ancient Cities by Uncasual Games. A strategy survival city builder based on ancient times and also set in the Neolithic era. Guide your people through the generations as you discover technologies, manage resources, face dangers and enemies, and build the most glorious ancient city you can. The ecosystem will be simulated with growth, reproduction and death, and on the human side there will be politics, religion, social classes and wonder building. Overall it sounds amazing, but it's one I would be cautious with. It raised 125,000 euros on Kickstarter which can be enough for a project like this. So I'd keep watching to see how it develops over time. Then we've got Rise of Man by Dark Cross Games. A prehistoric strategy game with city building and survival elements. Available on Steam in early access now, it's possible to get a closer look at this one. Harvest resources, research technologies, build your village and hunt prey. Although the game looks rough, reviews say issues and bugs are fixed at a relatively fast pace. If development can continue at that rate, this could end up being great soon enough. 
However, if development slows, this could end up being a bare bones experience for a long time. If you like the look of it, check in on the game once in a while, and if it looks good enough for you, then you might want to jump in. Next up we've got They Are Billions by Numantian Games. Build human colonies to survive in a post-apocalyptic world where countless infected try to eliminate the remaining humans. This one stands out clearly from the crowd with its art style and zombie-themed gameplay. Develop your colony, build an army, prevent infection, and hold off thousands of units in survival mode or the campaign. This could be incredibly fun, but that depends on how much depth there is to the game. If there's enough content, it could be countless hours, but if it's the same horde survival over and over again, it could get tiresome. Beta keys have gone out, so we have some good looks at the game so far, and as we approach release we should get a clearer picture of what the final game will actually be like. And then we have Atomic Society by Far Road Games. A post-apocalyptic town-building game where you set the laws, be cruel or kind, sane or insane, as every social issue presents a choice as you overcome challenges to sustain a growing population and maintain law. It's an interesting concept and looks to be like a Fallout city builder, but admittedly it does also look rough around the edges. It's still in pre-alpha though, so I'd keep an eye on it and see how it develops. And next we've got Depraved by Evil Bite. Lead the pioneers of the Wild West as you start in a procedurally generated world with only a single carriage to establish your first settlement. Your inhabitants have needs, production chains are crucial to survival, and there are dozens of dangers and challenges to face. Seeming to be like a Wild West Banished, this could be a fresh new take on that type of gameplay and looks to have a lot of nice details in terms of what's possible. However, the release date is originally set for late 2017, but I don't think it's coming out quite that soon. It's a two-man team, so development might be a little slower. Then we've got Sugar Mill by Atlantis Code. A sandbox village building game set in the early days of European settlement of the Caribbean. Lots of production, things expire, your people have needs, and there are pirate attacks. This is one to be cautious of though, as it's been in early access for a while and already exceeded the stated time that it should be in early access. It's also got mixed reviews on Steam. There is a lot of promise and it could end up being great, but the road to get there might be a little bumpy. Next up we have Lords and Peasants by Inverted Cat Games. A medieval city building real-time strategy where you start as the lord of a small village and develop it into a prospering city. Large procedural dynamic worlds, individually simulated peasants, diplomacy and conquest, up to 16 player multiplayer and mod support. It all sounds good but from what we've seen it's got a long way to go and at the moment seems a little bare bones. If it continues to improve, new features get added and gameplay is deep and competitive, then this could be a good one down the line. And then we have Ostriev by Yevhenyi. You are the governor of an 18th century town that will challenge your creative skills and management abilities, boasting organic town layouts, a story mode campaign, mod support, and all the usual city building accompaniments, there's potential here. It's an indie dev and visually looks a bit lackluster, but it's been getting some positive reception based on its alpha and has a lot of room to grow. The development roadmap lists tons of things and we can look forward to all of them being implemented. Until then, I'd recommend keeping an eye on it until it looks like it's your kind of game. Next we have Foundation by Polymorph Games. Here's a gridless city builder set in medieval times also focusing on organic villages. You as the village lord guides your villagers, develop economy and build majestic monuments. Buildings adapt to the topography you place them on and you can design unique monuments. At the moment the game looks a little empty and it's got a long way to go, but it could be great competition against other games of this type if everything promised makes it into the game. Then we have Selig by Stardog Games. Not exactly traditional city building per se, this is a trading management game centered around the accumulation of wealth. You play a single character living through the dark ages trying to bring riches to your family. Kind of like Banished plus The Sims, which is also like The Guild. You develop your village by buying houses and businesses, produce goods, and trade in the living economy, but you can also find love, commit crimes, and live through generations with your children taking over once you die. 
It's an early access on Steam now, with very positive reviews thanks to the active and responsive development from the creators, though it may or may not be able to live up to existing games. Have a look for yourself and see what you think. Next up we've got Rise of Industry by Dapper Penguin Studios. A charming looking industrial city builder where you build factories, construct transport lines, move raw materials, produce finished goods and trade with other cities. Promising strategic complexity and replayability, but also accessibility. It's aiming to be a fun experience for new players and endless engagement for those more experienced. The roadmap lists a ton of features and continued development after release, and overall it's looking to be a very solid game. We can't be sure yet, but it's coming to early access at the start of 2018, so we'll get a good look then. And then we have Voxel Tycoon by Voxel Tycoon Devs. And now we have some games inspired by the old Transport Tycoon. First, a strategy game about transportation, building factories, and mining in infinite voxel landscapes. If you're into Transport Tycoon or Factorio, this one's up your alley with lots of transport options, detailed and customizable factory setups made of individual facilities, and modding support. There's an incredibly detailed roadmap that shows a ton of features that will be available by the first alpha, scheduled by early 2018. For a two-person team, the development process seems incredibly clean and organized, so we can expect this to be consistent and smooth sailing up until release. Next we've got Railway Empire by Gaming Minds Studio. United States, 1830 and the race is on to establish the most dominant and powerful rail empire in all of North America. Create elaborate and wide-ranging rail networks, purchase 40 different trains, research technologies, along with building and maintaining stations, factories, and tourist attractions as you compete with rivals, above board, or with espionage. There seems to be depth and complexity to this one, and you can choose between simple and complex game modes for difficulty. There's even a casual model train mode. If you like trains and a bit of an old-timey feel, you should like this one. Then we have Mashinki by Jan Zeleny. For one more transport game, here's a solo dev with a game where you build your own transport imperium on a procedurally generated map. A mix of realistic graphics, isometric construction mode, and board game-like rules as you grow your business through the ages inventing new buildings and vehicles. Maximize your profits by transporting passengers and cargo. Visually, it looks beautiful and unique, and it's an early access on Steam right now with very positive reviews. Definitely worth a look if you're into these kind of transport games. Moving on from transport games, next up we have City State by City State Devs. What looks to be inspired by the old SimCity 2000, here's a modern city builder that intends to mix politics, economy, and city building. Answer political issues and make choices with consequences as you balance the economy with production, trade, supply, and demand. There are even arcologies, doesn't that bring back some memories? This seems to have a ton of potential, but it's got a long way to go. Even the website still has some coming soon pages waiting to be filled with information. However, if it develops to what it's promising to be, it could be like a classic SimCity souped up. And then we've got Industries of Titan by Brace Yourself Games. An industrial city building sim strategy game set on Saturn's moon Titan and brought to you by the developers of Crypto the Necrodancer, interestingly enough. Create a sprawling industrial city, design powerful factories, and compete with the great houses to stake your claim on the industries of Titan. It looks unique, but we haven't seen much gameplay yet. We can, however, expect an awesome soundtrack to go with the game. I'd keep a close eye on this one to see how it really plays, but it's definitely something worth putting on the watch list. And next we have Jurassic World Evolution by Frontier Developments. Based on the movie, it's time to build your own modern dinosaur zoo and theme park. Every choice leads to a different path and challenges arise when life finds a way. Very little gameplay footage has been revealed so far, so it's hard to say anything too specific, but if you're a fan of building up your own little dino theme park colony zoo thing, then that's what this one's supposed to be all about. As we approach the summer 2018 release date, we should get a better look and you'll be able to see for yourself. Then we have Tropico 6 by Limbic Entertainment. 
El Presidente is back as you prove yourself once again as a feared dictator or peace-loving statesman. Heimemont Games, which developed the last few Tropico games, is now off the project, and now it's onto Limbic Entertainment that might change things up. New to the series are large archipelagos, building bridges and tunnels, election speeches are back, sending out raids to steal wonders of the world, and customizing your palace. The Tropico series is a long-running one and it's had its ups and downs while everyone has their favorite. Not much gameplay has been revealed yet, but we can expect it to not deviate too much from the rest of the series. If you're a fan, you're already watching this one. But the question is, will this be one of the better ones of the series? Finally, we have Anno 1800 by Ubisoft Bluebyte. Last but not least is the latest addition to the Anno series, Lead the Industrial Revolution, where the path you choose will define your world. Be an innovator or an exploiter, an oppressor or a liberator. It's promising a classic Anno experience with city building and story mode campaign, a sandbox mode and a multiplayer experience. As with Tropico, this is a long-standing series with high expectations, and it'll be easy for this one to disappoint if it doesn't manage to live up to them. Once again, not much real gameplay has been shown off yet, but as we get closer to the winter 2018 release, we should see what it's really like. And that's it, that's 24 upcoming city builders that should be releasing through 2018 and some into 2019 depending on their development. Which ones are you most interested in? Also, here's something I'd like to know. Which city builder got you into the genre? You know, your first city building game. Personally, I grew up with the old Impressions titles. Speaking of, I do have a lot of Caesar 3, Pharaoh, and Emperor content on the channel. Or you can check out the other 2018 lists which are listed at the top of this video, and will be linked on screen or in the description. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. And I'll see you in the next video.